I'm Murdo Fraser. Um, since 2001 I've been a member of the Scottish Parliament for the Mid-Scotland and Fife region that includes people here in Perth and Kinross. I live here in Perth with my family. In a previous life I was a, a solicitor in private practice uh, and I'm standing for, for re-election as somebody who wants to take Perthshire forward. I've got good ideas I think about how we improve quality of life here in Perth and across Perthshire and I'm very committed to a Scotland that's still part of the UK where we have a competitive tax regime and better quality public services. I think that politics affects all of our lives. If people don't vote in an election, they don't really have a right then to complain if they think the government isn't doing uh, the right things or doing things that they disagree with. So I would encourage people to make sure they register to vote and they actually participate in the election. We had a, a, a record turnout in Scotland at the independence referendum nearly, what, 20 months ago when the whole country was engaged. I hope we'll see similar levels of engagement for this Scottish Parliament election. So whoever ends up winning it, whoever's in government, has the best possible mandate to take their ideas forward. Yes, I'm currently registered to vote. I think the experience of most people of the NHS is that it is an excellent service once you get into it. I've certainly had experience locally with the uh, health service here for my children and, and I find the quality of care um, particularly from the professionals involved, is, is really second to none. I think where people perhaps have a difficulty with the NHS is, is accessing some services in the first place. There are real concerns across Perthshire about the uh, lack of availability of out-of-hours services, where we've seen a reduction in the out-of-hours service at Perth Royal Infirmary, people now having to make the journey to King's Cross Hospital in Dundee for out-of-hours treatment uh, late at night or, or at the weekends, whereas previously um, they could be treated here in Perth. And to me that's the single biggest failing of the NHS locally is, is the availability of services for local people at a time when they need them out of hours and that's I think causing quite serious public concern. I think that there's huge concern at the moment about the vibrancy of the Perth economy and particularly the vibrancy of the city centre. We've seen the, the shock announcement in the last couple of weeks of McEwen's closing. That, that's got very serious implications because McEwen's was the, the major independent retailer in Perth and people came from all parts of the country, from Edinburgh and Aberdeen and made day trips to come to Perth because of McEwen's. And I've engaged with a lot of the traders in Perth who are very, very concerned about Perth's reputation as a centre for independent retail. And it seems to me that the, the council here run by the SNP is completely out of ideas as to what to do to improve things for, for retail in Perth. The, the, the big idea is, that is, is, is the, the, the Timble Road development which is another cinema, another gym, more restaurants. I don't think Perth needs any of these things. What we need is a better quality retail offering that will bring people into the city centre. And what I'd like to see is action on a number of fronts. I think we need to take action on business rates which uh, have been too high and are squeezing businesses out of uh, the city centre. We need action on parking where we need to make parking more affordable and more accessible to bring people in. And we need something done about creating a city centre attraction for Perth. Many of the attractions we have in Perthshire are not actually located right here in the city so they're very little to bring people to the heart of Perth. We need a city centre attraction that's going to bring people right in here to the centre of Perth and when they're here they can spend money in the shops and restaurants and bars at the same time. So we need a new vision for Perth and one that's sadly lacking at the moment. I think, that, I think our greatest threat are people who want to destroy 
our way of life. And, and what we've seen uh, in recent years is, is, is a threat from, from, from terrorism, from people who don't share our, our world values, our belief in freedom, in, in liberty, in, in free speech. In, a, in an open democratic society, people want to challenge that. Now I think the issue of Trident is a slightly different one. I'm, I'm a supporter of an independent deterrent, I want to see nuclear disarmament, but I don't believe we should be disarming unilaterally in a world where countries like Iran and, and North Korea uh, are developing nuclear capacity. And I think if we're going to give our nuclear weapons up, we should only do that in return for others giving theirs up too. Um, and I think that if you look at, if you look at um, the way the world has changed. 40 years ago we could never have predicted how the world would be today. If we renew Trident, we're renewing Trident for the next 40 years. We can't know today what the threats to our way of life might be in 10 years time, 20 years time, 30 or 40 years time. So we have an insurance policy which to me is having a, an independent nuclear deterrent. I think we would be foolish to give that up without guarantees about the future. There are three basic reasons why I think you should vote Conservative. The, the, the first is on taxation. The Scottish Parliament now has very substantial powers on tax, including powers to vary the rate of income tax. We're very clear, and we're the only party saying this, is that we don't believe people in Scotland should pay higher taxes than those in the rest of the UK. It would send out a very, very negative message about Scotland as a place to come and live and work and bring up a family and set up a business if Scotland was seen as the highest tax part of the UK. So let's keep taxes where they are. The second reason is because of the Constitution. We had our vote on independence, it was a clear and decisive vote. The SNP seemed to want to talk about rerunning the referendum at the first opportunity. I think that would be disastrous for Scotland, it would drive away business and investment. We've made our choice, let's stick with the UK. And thirdly, we need a strong opposition in the Scottish Parliament. We're not expected to be in government after this election. We expect that Nicola Sturgeon will still be First Minister. We think the Labour Party have made a pretty poor job over the past nine years of being in opposition. Uh, I think with Ruth Davidson we've got a strong leader who can stand up to Nicola Sturgeon and we will oppose the SNP and hold them as a constructive and rigorous opposition to account for their job in government uh, and that's why we think we're better placed to provide that strong opposition that Scotland needs. What I would say to Nicola Sturgeon is you need to focus on, on the day job. I think the SNP in government have been far too much focused on the constitutional question. Uh, we had a referendum on, on Scottish independence 20 months ago. There was a, a clear and decisive vote in that people wanted to stay in the UK. And we were told in advance of that by Nicola Sturgeon that this would be a once in a generation vote. Um, I think she needs to stick by that commitment. I think she needs to say we're going to part the idea of independence, not keep coming back to that and get on with her the day job of improving the quality of life of people in Scotland and improving public services like the NHS. Um, and I think that's a message actually which is one that is very attractive to people in this election. I think people, particularly people who voted no in the referendum, don't want to hear from Nicola Sturgeon about the circumstances in which another referendum can be held. They want to hear from the SNP what they're going to do if they get re-elected to improve the quality of life for people in Scotland.